Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to introduce to you the method of variation of parameters for solving second order non-homogeneous equations that are linear with constant coefficients. So when we say that our equation is linear with constant coefficients, we mean that a, b, and c here, the coefficients for the second derivative, the first derivative, and y on the left side, those are all constants. And our function on the right hand side is just some function of x, non-homogeneous, means that this right hand side, this g of x, is not zero. As with the method of undetermined coefficients, when we are solving a non-homogeneous equation using this variation of parameters method, we will first solve the associated homogeneous equation, which is the same left side but equal to zero, and that will give us the complementary function, which will be part of our general solution for the differential equation. Again, as with the method of undetermined coefficients for second order non-homogeneous equations, our general solution will be y equals our complementary function y sub c plus an additional particular function. And for our variation of parameters method, we actually use what are called Ronskians to find this. Variation of parameters is actually a combination of the reduction of order method, which you may have seen with second order equations already, and Kramer's rule, which deals with solving systems of linear equations from algebra or pre-calculus. Since we'll be using Ronskians in this video, make sure that you know how to take determinants of square matrices before you go through the method with us here. So our overall general solution will be y equals our complementary function plus our particular function. For the undetermined coefficients method of second order equations, we actually use the form of our g of x on the right hand side of the equation to decide what our form for y sub p will be. In the variation of parameters method, we will actually always have the same form for y sub p. It will be equal to u1 y1 plus u2 y2. And this y1 and y2 are the two functions that make up our fundamental set of solutions from the complementary function. So this y1 and y2 actually come from our complementary function that we will have already solved because we have already solved the associated homogeneous equation. In our previous video about using Ronskians, we said that we could actually use these to check for linear independence of our fundamental set of solutions for a second order equation. We're going to use them slightly different here in the context of variation of parameters. So if we already know y1 and y2 from our complementary function y sub c, then we really just need to find u1 and u2, and we will have our particular function. And the method for finding u1 and u2 goes something like this. We'll actually figure out the derivatives of these, and then we'll integrate them to figure out u1 and u2 at the end. Both of the formulas for u1 prime and u2 prime have the Ronskian in them. We have something divided by this Ronskian here. And remember, this Ronskian is just the two functions from the complementary function in the first row, their derivatives in the second row, and we simply take the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. What goes in the numerator for the formula for u1 prime we'll actually call w1, and that's going to be your original Ronskian, this 2 by 2 matrix here, determinant of that, with the first column replaced with the entries 0 and whatever g of x was your right hand side of your equation. Similarly for u2 prime, the numerator of that expression will be 0 and g of x plugged in to the second column, column 2 of your matrix, and we'll take the determinant for that Ronskian which we call w2. So you can see in the process of variation of parameters, we'll actually find three Ronskians. We'll find our original Ronskian of y1 and y2, which come from the complementary function. And then we'll also find w1 and w2 simply by replacing one column at a time and finding that respective determinant as well. Let's go ahead and work through an example with you just so you can see how the method works. And then we'll give you a summary of the method at the end. So we have y double prime plus y is equal to secant of x. This is a good candidate for variation of parameters instead of the method of undetermined coefficients. For the undetermined coefficients method, we would have to know a particular form that we're going to use for our y sub p, but here we can just use Ronskians to do it. So we'll go ahead and solve our associated homogeneous equation first. We'll solve y double prime plus y is equal to zero, and its characteristic polynomial for this equation is going to be m squared plus one is equal to zero. If we subtract one from both sides, we'll get that m squared is negative one, and then square rooting both sides, we'll get that m is equal to plus or minus i. That gives us complex values for our m here, with alpha being zero and beta being one. And so we should then know that our complementary function is going to be c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x.
Now remember what we do. We use this y1 and y2 here that we have from our complementary function. And now we use this y1 and y2 cosine x and sine x to calculate our Ronskian. So we go ahead and assign those as the functions in the first row of our matrix, cosine x and sine x. And finding the first derivative as the second row, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So if we find the determinant, it will be this diagonal multiplied, which is cosine squared x, minus the other diagonal multiplied, which would be negative sine squared x. So minus negative would actually give us plus. So we'll get cosine squared x plus sine squared x, and that's an easy reduction by Pythagorean identity, right? We just get 1. And for our other Ronskians, our w1 and w2, we'll just replace those respective columns in the determinant that we're trying to take. So our w1, I will replace the first column with 0 and then the right-hand side function. So 0 and secant of x are now my column 1 for w1. I keep the original column 2 that I had in my original Ronskian here. We go ahead and do the determinant again. 0 times cosine x is going to be 0 minus secant x times sine x. Now we can think of secant x as 1 over cosine x, right? So we get negative actually sine of x over cosine of x if we think of secant as the reciprocal of cosine of x. And this actually gives us then negative tangent of x. So that's our w1. Let's go ahead and calculate w2. So for w2 now, we will keep the original first column from our Ronskian here, which is cosine x negative sine x. And instead of replacing column 1 with 0 and secant x, then we'll go ahead and replace column 2 with 0 and secant x. Doing this determinant here, we go ahead and do cosine x times secant x. These are reciprocals of one another, so we actually get 1 there. Minus sine x times 0 here, we would actually get 0, so we just get 1 there as well. I'll go ahead and rewrite all of these again just so we have them so I can scroll down. So our original Ronskian was 1, our w1 was negative tan x, and our Ronskian number 2, w2, was also 1, giving ourselves some room. So now we go ahead and write down u1 prime and u2 prime. So u1 prime, remember, is going to be w1 divided by w. So that's the Ronskian when we replace the first column and then the original Ronskian. So that would be negative tangent x over 1 in this case, which is just negative tan x. And our u2 prime, that's going to be w2 divided by w. And that will be 1 divided by 1, also known as 1. Now remember, the goal for this is to get u1 and u2. So I have u1 prime and I have u2 prime. So we need to take the antiderivative of these. So in other words, u1 is going to equal the integral of negative tan x dx. And u2 is going to equal the integral of really 1 dx. If we take the antiderivative of negative tangent x, we actually get ln of cosine x. We're going to go ahead and leave off the constant of integration on these. So we get ln of cosine x. Over here for u2, if we take the antiderivative of 1 dx, we'll just get x, again leaving off our constant. So I have my u1 and I have my u2. So let's go ahead and think about what we already have. Remember that our y sub p is supposed to be u1 y1 plus u2 y2. And remember, y1 and y2 came from the original complementary function. Our y1 here, that first thing we put in the Ronskian was cosine x, and our y2 here is sine x. So we already know those. And so ln cosine x is going to go in for u1, and x is going to go in for u2. So our yp, our particular function in this case, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these so it doesn't look like both of the cosines are in the ln function here. So I have this ln of cosine x times a cosine x. I'm going to call that cosine of x times ln of cosine of x that way. That's my u1, y1, plus u2, y2. Here I'll just have x times sine x. And now just remember that our overall general solution is going to be the yc that we wrote down at the very beginning when we solved the associated homogeneous equation 
plus the yp that we just got, right? So our y here is going to equal c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. That's our y sub c plus the yp that we just got. So plus cosine x ln of cosine x plus x sine x. And before we encourage you to watch our examples video that works a couple more of these for you using variation of parameters, we'll go ahead and give you a summary of the method since it's just a little bit longer method than some others you might have worked with. So the first thing, when we're given a second order non-homogeneous equation, we have constant coefficients here, we'll solve the associated homogeneous equation, which is the left-hand side equal to zero. That gives us our y sub c. Our y1 and y2 are going to be part of our y sub c. Then we'll need to work on y sub p. It's going to have the form instead of c1y1 plus c2y2 with constants in front of these. It's going to have u1y1 plus u2y2. u1 and u2 are going to be functions of x. The way we'll find u1 and u2, first we'll find their derivatives using the Ronskians w, w1, w2. u1 prime will be w1 over w. u2 prime will be w2 over w. We'll find these Ronskians. Remember w1 and w2, you replace 0 and g of x in the respective columns 1 and 2. Once you have this information, you'll have the derivatives. You'll then take the antiderivatives. You'll integrate to get u1 and u2, and you'll combine those with y1 and y2. We'll go ahead and make an extra note here. If you're doing higher order equations using variation of parameters, you'll be using maybe 3 by 3 determinants or 4 by 4 determinants then these columns that we replace the first column or the second column, etc., with in our original Ronskian, those will have zeros as every entry except for the very last entry in the column, which will be your g of x. All right, everyone, go ahead and check out our examples video for variation of parameters. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.